Jim McConville, the 40th Chief of Staff of the United States Army. For more than 200 years, in the toughest times, the military has used music to ease our fears, inspire hope, and remind us who we are. We're going to get through these tough times together. I invite you to listen to this song produced by the U.S. Army Band Downrange in collaboration with one of my predecessors, the great 37th Chief of Staff of the Army, retired General Marty Dempsey. It speaks to what we are all about. Thank you, and we remain Army Strong. I 
don't know if you can see the changes that have come over me in these past few days i've been afraid that we might drift away so i've been telling old stories singing songs that make me think about where i came from that's the reason why i know we're gonna be okay oh let me tell you that i love you that i think about you all the time america you're calling us still our home sweet home and if we let this crisis change us you know that it would make me more than sad America's been everything I've ever had Things have changed and they keep on changing Freedom's lost and our fears are raging Those who serve keep our hopes from fading Their courage lights our way Oh, we've got to try and keep on trying Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony will begin in two minutes. Please mute your microphones. For those who will be speaking today, please unmute your mics when speaking and mute them when finished. For all attendees, when it is time for an applause, please unmute your mics for the applause and then mute them again when finished. Thank you.
Good morning. Brigadier General Burkhead, Colonel Hill, Colonel Retired Corson, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Van the Third, Command Sergeant Major Aaron Spall, Distinguished Guests, Pirate Battalion, Army ROTC Program alumni, members of the Hampton University faculty and staff, members of our supporting organizations, friends, and Pirate Battalion. On behalf of the president of Hampton University, Dr. William R. Harvey, and the professor of military science, Lieutenant Colonel J. Marquise, I would like to welcome you to the Hampton University Winter 2020 Virtual Commissioning Ceremony. I am Second Lieutenant Thomas Curry, and I will be your narrator for today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the official party. Brigadier General Janine L. Burkhead, the Assistant Adjutant General for the Maryland National Guard and Deputy Commandant for Reserve Affairs for the United States Army War College and our guest speaker for today's ceremony. Colonel Trevor W. Hill, Commander for 4th Brigade ROTC. Lieutenant Colonel Retired Claude Van, the president of the Hampton University Military Alumni Association and Pirate Battalion Alumni Class of 1977. Lieutenant Colonel J. Marquise, Professor of Military Science. Master Sergeant Enoch Bostic, Senior Military Instructor. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the commissionees. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem and remain standing for the invocation given by Miss Odessa Woodhouse. Good morning, let us pray. God, we come before you this morning. Thank you for allowing us to see another day. We come to celebrate the accomplishments of cadets Toby, Toby Palmer and cadet Justin Wright and all their, they have achieved here at the Home by the Sea at Hampton University. We thank you for our distinguished guests, family and friends who have joined us to support them today on this special occasion. God, we ask that you will bless them as they take the oath of office to support and defend the Constitution of the 
of the United States. And we ask that you will bless them and let them hear a word of encouragement on today, God, that will take them through their career and bless them as they take their next journey um, away from um, their family and friends and to start out and to bark a new journey in their life. We bless you for all that you're about to do in their lives. And we ask that you will keep them, protect them and lift them up in everything that they do. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Please be seated. We will now play a video, a seven minute video from the Army's senior leaders. Congratulations on your upcoming graduation and commissioning. This is a huge milestone in your lives and also the beginning of you joining our ranks. Welcome. And we need each of you ready to lead the world's finest and most lethal force. I regret that I'm not able to give you this message in person and that this year commencement and commissioning will be different. But celebrating your achievement differently shouldn't diminish what you have accomplished here, nor tarnish the pride you should feel. What I would offer to you is a single touch point you can always return to, no matter where you may find yourself in life. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. With that said, the circumstances you put yourself in now won't last forever. To build this resilience, train. Train hard and train often. Train your body to operate under duress, your mind to remain calm in chaos, and your heart to endure hardship. In a short time, you will have the privilege of leading our nation's men and women, and they will look to you as a steady hand at the helm. Serve them well. I am incredibly proud of you. Congratulations on graduation and commissioning, and I will see you out in the field. Congratulations, and thank you for making the decision to join the best team in the world and be part of something bigger than yourself. I want to thank your parents for raising such fine young men and women who have answered the nation's call to service. And if you don't remember anything else I say today, I want you to remember two things. People first and winning matters. People first is a philosophy. I believe you take care of your people, your soldiers, your families, and your civilians, and you create a command climate where everyone takes care of each other and treats everyone with dignity and respect. You will have a great cohesive team which will win on any battlefield. And winning matters in the Army is an attitude. When we send the Army somewhere, we don't go to try hard, we don't go to participate, we go to win. That's what the American people expect, and that's what you will do. And that's why winning matters. We are very proud of you. Stay healthy, stay safe, people first, winning matters, and we remain Army strong. My name is Funk, and I'm an American soldier. Commissioned as an armor officer through Montana State University ROTC in 1982, go Bobcats. I'm honored to be the 17th Commanding General of the United States Army's Training and Doctrine Command, and the pursuit of victory starts here. What a great day to be a soldier. These young men and women in the audience today are the latest products of a century-old tradition of service to the nation. Let me join the chorus of voices offering congratulations to you and your loved ones. Addressing such a talented group of future leaders is true privilege. Thank you for taking your place in the long and distinguished line of graduates that have answered the call to serve. Welcome to the profession of arms, the most exclusive fraternity or sorority in the world. I always ask two questions of the soldiers and civilians that I meet. Why did you join and why do you continue to serve? The U.S. Army is the greatest team ever assembled. Teamwork is why I joined the Army. This is America's Army. We all learn and grow together and we are soldiers for life. I continue to serve because of the people. The Army is a people business, and the Army is not just about people, it is people. One of the fundamentals I have learned in over 40 years of service is this, high standards, 
Positive outlook and excellence are contagious. Whatever comes your way, remain calm in the storm and never waver. You're a leader now. Your soldiers are watching. It is your leadership that will help us accomplish our mission in the face of COVID-19 or any future adversary. I have no doubt that you will lead our nation through the challenges of the 21st century. You should feel privileged to wear the cloth of our great nation, the jersey of America's fighting team. Leave that jersey in a better place every day. Good luck to you all in your future endeavors. Godspeed and may God bless these young leaders and our great nation. As I said when I started, my name is Funk and I'm an American soldier. Thank you. Have a great day. Hello, and let me be among the first to congratulate you on this incredible day. I'm certain that this day is much different than the way you envisioned it. And I apologize that you can't be in a large audience among your friends and additional family members, but it makes it no less important. And I want to make sure that you understand that what you have undertaken, what you have achieved, is going to be important for our nation. You are going to swear an oath to the Constitution and the people that stand behind that to do your duty, to protect our nation against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And right now, we face an unseen enemy. That's why we are conducting your commissioning ceremony in this way. But I know that you're up to the task. I know that you will take the training we've given you and that you will perform your duties thoughtfully and faithfully. I have faith and confidence in you, as do all of our senior Army leaders. And on this day, I want to congratulate you for doing what only one out of every thousand people in our country ever does, standing up and taking the oath of office to become an officer in the United States military. Congratulations, United States Army. Second Lieutenant. The commissionees have endured years of training culminating with today's event. They have successfully completed field training exercises, leadership laboratories, and intensive physical fitness training, along with a multitude of other cadet duties. With the support of their instructors, family members, peers, and mentors, Today will mark each commissionee's transition from being a scholar and apprentice soldier to a leader in the United States Army. To address the commissionees before they make their official transition is our distinguished guest speaker for today's ceremony. She will be introduced by our current professor of military science, Lieutenant Colonel J. Marquise. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Lieutenant Colonel J. Marquise, the professor of military science the Hampton University Army ROTC program. I would like to thank Brigadier General Janine Burkhead for presiding over our ceremony today. Before I introduce our honored guest speaker, I would like to thank and also welcome President of Hampton University, Dr. William R. Harvey, the Provost, Dr. Joanne Haysbert, Dean of School of Liberal Arts and, Science and Education, Dr. Linda Malone Clone, Civilian Aide to the Secretary of the Army, Mr. Mike Flanagan. The Commanding General of the United States Army Cadet Command, Major General John Evans Jr., retired United States Army Major General Wallace Arnold, 438 ROTC Commander Colonel Trevor Hill, the Command Sergeant Major of 438 ROTC Command Sergeant Major Aaron Spall, the Military Officers Association of America, the Rocks Organization, and the cadets, friends, and alumni of the Pirate Battalion who are watching on YouTube. Thank you for joining us today virtually to celebrate this very special and momentous day as we commission two new officers into the greatest army in the world. One that I am very proud of and one I consider an honor and a privilege to serve in. These two cadets have proven that they have what it takes to become commissioned officers in the United States Army and to earn our trust to lead the sons and daughters of a great nation. I am confident that you will uphold the trust as you lead these great soldiers. And I am also confident that you will serve your country proudly and well. Today, I have the distinct honor to introduce Brigadier General Janine L. Burkett as our guest speaker. Brigadier General Burkett has a remarkable record as a leader in service to our nation. She has served in the United States Army Reserves and Army National Guard for over 29 years 
which began upon a commission from Hampton University in 1991 as a chemical officer. In 1994, she received an appointment to the Maryland Army National Guard and was assigned to the 29th Sports Center and later as the aide de camp to the Adjutant General. Throughout her distinguished military career, Brigadier General Burkett has commended at all echelons of leadership and has deployed several times overseas in support of our nation. Today, Brigadier General Burkett serves as Assistant Adjutant General for the Maryland National Guard, responsible for readying, training, and equipping of more than 4,700 soldiers for the state and federal missions. She is also dual-headed as the Deputy Commandant for Reserve Affairs for the United States Army War College. In her civilian capacity, Ms. Burkett serves as a senior advisor in the Office of the Special Trustee for American Indians for the Department of the Interior in Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Brigadier General Janine Burkett. So good, good morning. I'm honored to share in Hampton University's 2020 Winter Commissioning Ceremony. I'm coming to you today from Baltimore, Maryland in the 5th Regiment Armory, Armory Museum. It's historic and I'm standing in front of the Monumental City Guard, an exhibit not only important to Black history, but also to Maryland and military history at large. Cadets, you did not get here on your own. So I thank Lieutenant Colonel Marquise and Master Sergeant Bostic for their dedication and commitment to grooming young cadets who will certainly have an opportunity to make us all proud as leaders they will become. I would be remiss if I did not mention two other members of the Pirate Battalion, Mrs. Woodhouse and Lieutenant Colonel Retired Van. Thank you both for your dedication and tireless support. And thank you parents, family, friends, and loved ones for supplying a support system for unlimited understanding, patience, and encouragement for our cadets. You all should have great pride in their making it through ROTC while also receiving a bachelor's degree from prestigious universities such as Hampton. You know, only 1% of Americans actually enter into the army and only 18% of that 1% become commissioned officers. So looking back on my own experiences, I have a little advice I want to share today. And I ask that you stick this in your rucksack. And for you civilians who don't know what that is, that's a backpack. And you're going to pull these tips out from time to time. So just as you start your journey, there are various conflicts around the world and uncertainties throughout the world and here at home. So just as my commissioning class was facing the climax of Desert Steel, Desert Storm, you are learning and leading in a space also marked by volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. I ask you to remember those four words, cadets, because you will hear them again, I assure you. Cadets Palmer and Wright, as you prepare to become the newest second lieutenants in the United States Army, I want to commit, I want you to commit these three tenets to memory. Are you ready? Number one, stay humble. No one knows it all or can do it all. Now is the time to ask questions and make your mistakes. In fact, learn everything you can from the supervisors, subordinates, and superiors around you. The humble leader recognizes they have much to learn from those who lead. So while Lieutenant Colonel Van and Sergeant Bullard, who's on the line today, and Mrs. Woodhouse recall me as a cadet, they did their best to prepare me. It is a much different experience, however, when you walk into that first assignment. Be confident that you know a lot, but be confident you have a lot to learn. At my, as my first assignment at Andrews Air Force Base, I met two NCOs who initially waited to see what this second lieutenant was all about. It did not take me long to figure out that these were two men that I needed to listen to. As my time at that assignment came to an end, they both encouraged me to seek opportunities outside of the reserves. 
I am thankful for having taken their advice. Number two, remember servant leadership. What you embark upon today is bigger than yourself. It's not about you. It's about showing up and giving your best every day. It is certainly a sacrifice. You want to inspire integrity, excellence, and quality in all you do. Coach, teach, and train others to do the same. Extend your influence beyond your chain of command and be the officer your subordinates and superiors seek. Did I already mention it's not about you? Don't become hyper-focused that you lose sight of giving back, not only to your platoon, to your squad, to your company, but to the community at large. There's much need for service. I was fortunate enough to be aide to camp to a servant leader. He extended influence well beyond his command. He supported diverse communities and mentored diverse people. And without his belief in, you got to see it to believe it, I would not be here today in this uniform. So third, finally, is resiliency. Trust me, we all have a lot going on in life, both personally and professionally, and this is 2020. So resiliency is the process of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tra tragedy, threats, and stress. All of that we know. The breadth and depth of the responsibility will increase in every, in every position you seek and in every promotion in your military career. Know that and embrace it. You will have to engage every day with soldiers. And remember, that engagement may lift a spirit or save a life. Master those skills which allow you to be resilient. Exercise patience and take advantage of the many experiences and resources the Army has to offer. Develop healthy coping mechanisms and always recognize when it's appropriate to ask for support. There's no shame in that. As I received details from Colonel Van and your chain of command about your progress, I was impressed with your grit and tenacity. You got the job done. Your life experiences are diverse. And coupled with that training, you will be phenomenal officers on day one. So Cadet Palmer, utilize the confidence that the ROTC program has given you. And remember those tools. I am certain you will achieve a lot as you advance in your career. Cadet Wright, continue to, do, continue to lead and develop your competencies as a soldier. Your ability to perform will take you far. So speaking of legacy, again, I want to mention our Monumental City Guard. These newly freed men and Civil War veterans formed the military organization that became so proficient in military skills that the Maryland National Guard took interest and accepted them as a separate company. They went on to fight in World War I, World War II, and the Korean War. We all carry on the legacy of greatness that these men fought for. And you know, coming from Hampton, you have a great legacy to uphold. Remember that. You have persevered and sit here today as the newest leaders in the Army. And for that, I'm exceedingly proud of you. In closing, uh, my mentor, General Vincent Brooks, gave this advice to those who sat here on their virtual commissioning not too long ago. And that was, listen, learn, and lead. Congratulations again. Go Army, beat Navy. Let's do this. Thank you. Thank you, Brigadier General Burkhead, for those amazing words of wisdom. Cadets, upon being commissioned, take an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States of America. This document created over 230 years ago, following our nation's valiant struggle for independence, is the cornerstone of our way of life. 
our nation derives its strength from the consent of the governed. The basic tenets of our constitution is that all people have certain natural inalienable rights, are born equal and must be treated equal before the law. These are powerful words which have meaning only as long as we as Americans are willing to defend our value system as embodied in our constitution. At this time, General Burkhead will now administer the oath of office to the cadets. As we begin this solemn oath, I wanna stress the importance of the oath you're about to take. Reflect on the seriousness of these words you're about to repeat. Do not take it lightly. Please stand, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I state your full name. I do, uh, right. do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support, support and defend, defend the Constitution of the United, United States. States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true allegiance and true to the same. <laughs> that I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office, discharge the duty of the office upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So, so help, help me God. God. Congratulations, second lieutenants. Welcome to the officer corps. Please be seated. At this time, the official pinning of the gold bars of a second lieutenant in the United States Army will now take place. Unveiling rank on a newly commissioned second lieutenant is traditionally performed by individuals who have had a positive influence on the commissionee. Family members, mentors, or close friends are usually chosen by the commissionee to pin on the gold bars as a symbol of stability and good luck. Following the conclusion of the pinning, the newly commissioned second lieutenants will receive their first salute, which is known as the silver dollar salute. This is a tradition in which the newly appointed officer presents a silver dollar to the first enlisted person to salute them after receiving their commission. The silver dollar salute tradition is symbolic of the relationship that will always exist through the pairing of NCOs with officers also symbolizing the exchange of respect and understanding between the officer and NCO to serve their country. Second Lieutenant Palmer, post. Second Lieutenant Toby Palmer is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in International Studies. Second Lieutenant Palmer is branching into active duty as an adjutant general officer. She is being pinned by her father, Chief Petty Officer retired Marvin Palmer, and mother, Lieutenant Commander retired Deidre Palmer. Second Lieutenant Palmer will receive her first salute from Specialist Roche. Now, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Second Lieutenant Toby Palmer. Yes. Second Lieutenant Wright, post. Second Lieutenant Justin Wright is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice. Second Lieutenant Wright is branching into active duty as a quartermaster officer. He is being pinned by his father, Rodney Wright, and mother, Andrea Wright. Second Lieutenant Wright will receive his first salute from Master Sergeant Enoch Bostic. Congratulations, sir. It's been an honor. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Second Lieutenant Justin Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all give a round of applause for all of today's newly commissioned officers. Congratulations. Please be seated. At this time, Lieutenant Colonel J. Marquis, on behalf of the Pirate Battalion's newest second lieutenants, would like to present Brigadier General Burkhead a small token of appreciation for her encouraging words. Ma'am, on the behalf of the newly commissioned lieutenants of, and the Pirate Battalion, we present to you this plaque and the tiny coin as a small token of appreciation for being our honored guest speaker today. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. We will now have a few words of encouragement to the commissionees by Colonel Retired Corson. Okay, I think I can be heard now. Yes, sir. As an old infantry officer and special forces officer, and I mean an old one, I want to extend my congratulations to our two newest second lieutenants in the United States Army. I know that you are about to embark on an adventure and take on responsibility as a leader amongst many thousands of leaders before you in the United States Army. As new second lieutenants, I also know that you probably have never heard of, or if you have, you don't know much about what is the Military Officers Association of America. As the president of the Virginia Peninsula chapter of that organization, that is the largest military support organization in America that supports and lobbies for the United States military. It consists of almost 200, over 294,000 officers, mostly retired, who have served their country proudly. These pieces of information and the Military Officers Association is something that maybe over time, you will learn what we do and what we care about. We, we do community support, we do social activities, and we lobby for the benefit of veterans, all, all military personnel, 
And our 294,000 officers represent all of the services of the United States military. So as you start your journey, keep in mind a motto which the Military Officers Association has adopted. Their motto is very simple, never stop serving. I congratulate both Lieutenant Palmer and Lieutenant, Second Lieutenant Wright for your achievement and wish you Godspeed and good luck as you venture forward. We will now have closing remarks by the Professor of Military Science, Lieutenant Colonel J. Marquis. Thank you for those words, Colonel Carson. To the newly, newly commissioned lieutenants, I say to you, congratulations on your accomplishment and welcome to the Army family. Graduating from this esteemed institution and program, you have now become a part of a great legacy that includes 15 general officer and flag general and flag officers, CEOs, and numerous other successful leaders. Be proud of what you have accomplished and go into the world knowing that you have proven what it takes to lead in the best army in the world. Let us give another round of applause for the two newly commissioned officers. To the family, friends, Higher Battalion alumni and the University Administrators and Faculty who supported these new second lieutenants throughout their journey to become commission officer, I say thank you for your unwavering support. I would like to give a special thanks to Dean Dr. Linda Malone Cologne, the Assistant Provost Dr. Polly Murphy, Assistant Dean Mr. Noble Dickinson, and Department Chairs Dr. Kermit Crawford and Dr. David Taylor for their outstanding support to the program. Without their support, especially over the last two weeks, we couldn't have been able to commission the two officers today. To Colonel Retired Corson in the Virginia Military Officer Association of America, thank you for your continued support and generosity to the cadets in the program. To Lieutenant Colonel Retired Van, I can't say enough how much we appreciate your support and unwavering commitment to the cadets of this program, and especially to the, all the amazing support we receive from the alumni. It is because of them that enables us to succeed. Last but not least, to Virginia Burkhead, thank you for taking time out of your very busy day to grace us with your presence, presence and your words of wisdom. To all of those who are watching on YouTube, thank you for joining, today, joining us on this very special day. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction by Miss Odessa Woodhouse and remain standing for the playing of the Army song. Let us pray. God, as once again, we come before your presence to say thank you. Thank you, God, for an awesome celebration of Second Lieutenant Palmer and Second Lieutenant Wright, God, as they took the oath of office. We ask that you continue to be with them, God, and that you will guide them and protect them as they start a new journey, God, in their lives, God. And we ask, God, that they will be the leaders that you have called them to be today and in the in, in the new, near future, God. Father God, we thank you for their families, their parents, grandparents, and anyone, God, that has um, imparted into their lives, God, to get them to where they are today. We ask that you continue to bless and keep them as only you can. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And we 
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our virtual ceremony. Thank you all for joining us today and have a wonderful holiday.